This episode of Bullet Heaven was made possible by Mages. In episode 83 of Bullet Heaven, we took a look at 5BP and Tachyon's Bullet Soul Tamatamashi on the Xbox 360, a game so nice they named it twice. We came away rather impressed with its cool 3D visuals and newbie-friendly approach that lets fresh players experience the thrills of a bullet hell shooter without the crushing difficulty that typically comes with them. 5BP is back with Bullet Soul once again, this time releasing it to Steam, complete with all DLC packs included. These packs add quite a bit more gameplay to the mix, which is always welcome. So what all is included? Let's take a closer look. Bullet Soul has a lot of choice to start off with in this particular release. Players can scroll left or right to select one of several modes of play, including the normal and version B modes, Bancho modes for each, and even a new caravan mode. The addition of the caravan mode is pretty fitting as Bullet Soul is, more or less, a caravan shooter with Damaku fire patterns at its core. We'll take a look at each mode's nuance in a second. When the game starts, players then choose which ship they will bring into the fray. All of the ships have varying power and speed ratings, which will benefit players with different gameplay styles. They also have really tiny hitboxes, typical of most Danmaku shooters. You also have the ability to condense or spread your fire. Much like Caves games, your movement will slow when you're using concentrated shots, which is also helpful in traversing dense bullet swarms. The A button fires the rapid shot and X condenses fire. The right bumper also enables rapid shots. A bullet clearing bomber can also be triggered with the B button or right trigger. Pretty straightforward. Playing Bullet Soul is pretty simple, destroy everything you see. Typically, all of the fire patterns here are fairly dense and frequent. The catch? When the enemy that fired them is destroyed, they will cancel out, leaving a ghostly wisp behind that can be collided into and dissipated with no harm coming to the player. These are the titular Bullet Souls, and almost every bullet pattern in the game can be cancelled out in this manner, even with bosses. However, these souls' purpose is actually kind of unclear. They don't really do anything for score, multipliers, or boosting any sort of power. Insofar as we can tell, these souls are just there to psych you out. During the boss encounters, players are able to target and destroy specific parts of the boss in question, leading to a handy bullet cancel every time it happens. The boss encounters can sometimes feel a bit long, but at the same time, figuring out the best order by which to destroy the many parts can be fun too. And mercifully, the patterns here are a real breeze to navigate, especially compared to some of the cave games we've recently taken a look at. Bullet Soul takes place over the course of five stages, with additional hidden loops and a true final boss to discover along the way. This requires a good amount of replay despite the relatively small stage set, though each stage is a fairly decent length. It's also worth noting that there is no difficulty select in Bullet Soul, which could make for a very easy game for veterans. However, a 1cc will definitely still be a challenge for even intermediate players later in the game. For players that need a little more help, an auto bomber can be activated before the game starts to automatically clear bullets with a bomb if the player gets hit. Type B refines Bullet Soul's gameplay with tweaked extend scores and a more daring gameplay twist with the added fourth ship piloted by Loop. This ship has a very short range melee attack when concentrated fire is activated, which is hugely powerful, but requires players to be precariously close to their targets. However, this factors nicely into the scoring, which we'll take a look at in a moment. Type B extends are much easier to grab, which also makes for a more forgiving game, especially when striving for the second loop and true final boss. The Banjo modes for both the core game and the version B mode allows players to take on and practice each stage on its own. But unlike the training mode from the vanilla game, Banjo mode is also a single stage score attack mode. A player's score can be uploaded to the online leaderboards to stack up against those around the world. Same goes for the caravan mode which, as its name implies, has the player try to destroy as much as possible while getting as many secret bonuses as they can within a 2 minute time limit. On the whole, Bullet Soul on Steam runs extremely well, even in co-op mode. But being that the game only runs in 720p, that's pretty much a given on most modern rigs. 
we still really like the gameplay style that it presents, and just like the original release, we'll come back to it again and again. Some shmup snobs might thumb their skyward pointed noses and bullet soles admittedly laid back gameplay, but we really appreciate the subtleties at play here that may not immediately be seen, especially in terms of score attack. There is actually quite a bit of risk reward to the game which we'll take a look at right now. Bullet Soul offers a light mix of scoring elements within its easygoing bullet cancelling gameplay, but requires a bit of a gutsy playstyle to really take advantage of the mechanics. To start, a multiplier will build as enemies are destroyed, but will fill much faster if players are closer to their kill when it happens. Being that proximity is essential for the biggest bonuses, Loop is a perfect candidate for the highest scores in Type B. In any case, there's a ton of risk reward in getting right up in your enemy's grill to boost a multiplier way up. Using a bomb will not affect your multiplier, but it does reset from stage to stage. Beyond this, there are a metric buttload of secret score points all over the place in every single stage. Some are secret, others are awarded for destroying certain things, some are even cryptically called mystery bonuses. But we've noticed that a lot of these special bonuses are triggered in much the same way that secret bonuses are collected in the Star Soldier for Famicom. Uncovering and destroying all of the mystery points in stage 2, for example, nets 80,000 points, just like Star Soldier. Killing two mirrored large enemies at the same time will award a special score. Full boss destruction, stage destruction, it goes on and on. At stage end, all of the player's bonus scores are tallied up with additional scores awarded for bombs left in the stock and whether or not a player no misses the stage in question, with a sizable pointage for each. If you do exceptionally well, you can get awarded with a snazzy crest at the end of each stage. If you collect enough of these, in specific the stars that come with them, and once you see the game, you can open up the second loop. This encourages a perfect play with a no-bomb clear, so players will likely find additional replay for these high-scoring elements. Additionally, several extends can be awarded for gaining a high enough score throughout the game, particularly in Type B. If a player needs a little practice, they can shoot for perfection with the added Boncho mode stages to practice for a perfect run on a stage-by-stage -stage basis. The local and Steam leaderboards can extend players' times with Bullet Soul if they're into the high score chase, and once again, just like its gameplay, Bullet Soul is dead simple and wholly transparent despite the huge amount of secret scoring points, making for a fairly straightforward system on the whole. As far as polygonal vertical scroll STGs go, Bullet Soul has a fairly decent presentation that stands out with great background and mechanical design. With the exception of power-ups and bomb pickups, everything is modeled in 3D and looks pretty good technically, save for the slightly jaggy edges on stuff, especially since the game only runs in 720p. However, everything moves at a snappy pace too, with zero slowdown. No force slowdown needed here either, since bullet cancelling is the name of the game, and fairly swift at that. The character design is fairly decent here as well, but some portrait pieces are just a little out of proportion and others a bit on the risque side. A lot of the in-game elements have some really tiny details and a nice, clear look to them too, but maybe lacks some of the personality that would have made the anime mechanical and creature design shine if they were 2D. Meanwhile, all of the player's ships and special effects are top-notch. The OST by the ever-popular Resonator is really strong too, with enjoyable, catchy, standout pieces throughout, no less. Some of the sound effects leave a bit to be desired though. Most of the enemies explode with the same long drawn out booms, but it still works regardless. Despite this, nothing is quite as satisfying as the bonus point jingle that peeks out every time they're triggered. Nice. Rounding out the presentation is an awesome dynamic menu system with clear concise text and layouts as well as taut day rotation for fans with rotatable monitors. Steam achievements and trading cards also add even more replay to an already solid game with plenty to do. So the general consensus here? The game is pretty darn good, through and through not to mention great for novices. But how does it stack up? Let's take a look. The control here is spot on. All of the bullet patterns in Bullet Soul are more or less a breeze to get around, especially for veterans. The controls here are smoother than a slip and slide, with exactly none of the slip and slidiness. 
nice and precise. Bulletsal is not nearly as hard as its contemporaries, but still offers a decent challenge for true completion. This is the bestest game if you're super noob at bullet hell shmups. With a total of five stages in typical arcade fashion, Bullet Soul's long stages make for a decent amount of length. All extra DLC included makes this release a winner. The stages are a great length, and some of the boss fights can get really drawn out. Score chasers should find a lot of replay here too. The 3D polygonal visuals of Bullet Soul are pretty solid, but only run in 720p. The character design on the whole is pretty solid, especially Yun's pink alien tadpole. Resonator's OST is pretty awesome stuff, but while we dig it, others might not appreciate the constantly wailing riffs. The sound here is pretty good, but a lot of the effects kind of get muddled together. Bullet Soul does a lot of great stuff with bullet cancellation, but on the whole it's also varied by the books, which also makes for a relaxing shooter as well. Its twists on caravan shooting are pretty great though. I love this game for its newbie-friendly mechanics, not to mention turning cancelled bullets into ghosts. It's a game that isn't trying to kill you mercilessly at all times. Instead, it buys you dinner and dessert. The physical release of Bullet Soul on Xbox 360 still fetches a hefty price tag, frequently reaching or exceeding $100 in Canuck bucks. This release is just 15 bucks. Do the math and the value is extremely good. Bullet Soul isn't a very complicated game. Dodge, shoot, collect multipliers, and win. It's nice and easy, but may not be for advanced players, but still undeniably fun. With all of its extra content included, though, there's a lot to play here, especially for high score chasers. As such, Bullet Soul gets a strong 4.5 out of 5. This is easily the best bang for your buck when it comes to grabbing a copy of Bullet Soul. Like we said before, physical copies are getting up there, so to get the game and all of its DLC for just 15 bucks, this is one game you shouldn't miss. So, uh, how's about you go ahead and definitively quantify a butt load for us? A butt is 108 Imperial Gallons. So a metric buttload would be... 432 liters? Ooh, that's a lot of butt. <laughs>